You know, we all have those pieces of wisdom that came to us along the way that stuck. I remember advice that a mentor of mine gave me many years ago during a particularly hard time in my life. He was speaking about the metaphor of a ship's captain sailing through a terrible storm. And he said, what does a captain do at that point? He doesn't try to stay on course to his destination. He just tries to keep the ship upright. He sails through the troughs of the waves. And then once the storm has blown over, at that point, he can worry about taking his bearings, resetting his course and figuring out how to get where he was going. It feels a little bit like these last couple of months have been a terrible storm. And I would like to claim that we've done far better than just keeping the USS Temple Sinai afloat. In fact, we've done great. We've brought Temple Sinai into your home when we uh, introduced Zoom. And we called to listen to your voices and make sure that you were okay. And for those that were in need of something, we connected you with those who could provide it. And now, thankfully, we have the luxury of stepping back, taking our bearings, and charting our course as we move forward into what's next for the synagogue. The Kuach Nefesh is the value that more members of our community know than any other, the importance of protecting lives. There may be differences of opinion on the severity and level of risk to a group of worshipers coming together for the High Holy Days, but at the end of the conversation, it is absolutely clear to us that there was only one decision that we could have made about what our experience would look like. But first, I want to tell you about the values that guided this process. We started by going to the board members and the members of the ritual committee and a sampling of congregants to ask them what were the most important elements of the high holidays that had to be preserved no matter what. What resounded from them was that it was our relationships that matter. Like a family reunion, we look forward to seeing each other these two special days. We know that Sinai is more than a building. The strength of our congregation lies in our people and our relationships. Our Kehila Kadosha, our sacred community, will shine brightly as we capture the significance of Sinai in a meaningful way. They also said there needs to be a chance to look in the spiritual mirror and make new commitments about our personal growth for the upcoming year. We all know that musical, traditional touch point that reminds us of who we are and where we came from. Others said they absolutely must hear the sound of the shofar. And still others said they need that island of private space that they experience when they stand in front of the open ark. The good news is that we're developing a still evolving plan to answer most of those goals. Not in the way you're accustomed to, but we'll tell you more about that in a moment. First, a word of encouragement. We've imagined a new world already. We've learned how to make the best out of this time of crisis. There is not one of you out there who hasn't surprised yourselves with your ability to adapt and in countless examples that I've heard to find blessing and opportunity where first we saw only limitations. So I'm going to encourage you to approach this with that in mind. The holidays are not going to look like they have ever before, but that is not uniformly a loss. There will be some surprising opportunities that this affords Temple Sinai that we've never been able to enjoy before. A little bit about the details. We will have a very small group of people together in the sanctuary, made up of your clergy, our accompanist Alex Rubenstein, the professional High Holiday Quartet, and our two tech guys. Rest assured, we'll be spread out across the entire room for our everybody's safety, and nobody else will be present for the service. While that is disappointing to hear, this will permit us to deliver the most meaningful musical experience in a setting that's familiar. We'll be streaming the service and using Zoom. For some, the simplicity, stability, and quality of our own streaming equipment will be preferable. And then for others, they rather the intimacy of seeing each other's faces with Zoom. We'll provide plenty of opportunities during the month of Elul beforehand 
to practice and to make sure that you can connect with us, and then we'll have our tech volunteers standing by during each service to help anyone who gets stuck. The family services will be led by the clergy again this year. We've experienced many opportunities for growth during this time, and this is yet another one as families will have the opportunity to share meaningful moments in the main Zoom room, like here in the shofar as one community together and that hasn't been easy to achieve before. There'll be opportunities for those who enjoy that private time at the Ark to make appointments and to come by the temple in between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur in ones and twos to have that time. We'll make sure that everyone who wishes will be able to have that space. We'll be creating our memorial book for loved ones. We're thinking of just as we always do but this year it will be a digital presentation. We hope you'll continue to find it a meaningful way of honoring their memories. We will still be able to hold our symposia. The topic is still in development, but we're excited about what is taking shape. If you have comments, suggestions, or requests, we stand by ready to receive them. This is a time ripe for creativity and we want to hear your thoughts. And as a final note, I want to remind you that while we will be apart in body, we're working very hard to ensure that we will be together in every other possible way. Shalom.